What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna start a little series of episodes on adding checklists to our notebooks. I think that this is actually the 12th episode in this series, um, so if you wanna follow along completely, check it out over at techmaker.tv. That's where we have all of the videos. If you just wanna kind of see how we're building out uh, a checklist feature you can see that here and it should be fairly straightforward with what you would do in your own app um, we'll do some stuff like use stimulus reflex which is an awesome new tool to uh, add reactivity to our app anyway I think it's actually gonna be pretty nice in the end I suspect that building out this checklist is gonna be two or three episodes and then we'll have another episode or two on the back end of that that actually we work on actually sort of styling the app making it look a little bit more professional so with all of that said let's go ahead and jump in and don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy this video um, it helps us know what kind of videos that we should keep making and uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already all that said let's jump in so what I'm gonna do in this episode is essentially go into our notes page here and add another option for add checklist and it's basically going to kind of just um, insert a new element into the page which has the ability to have checklist items added to it um, each one of those checklist items is going to have a like a status option so you'll be able to do uh, not started in progress or complete and then we'll have some sort of um, progress bar at the top indicating how far along we are in that checklist. So that's going to kind of make our page a little bit um, crowded. Um, so in the next set of episodes we'll be cleaning up the UI a little bit more. So we'll, we won't worry too much about the look and feel of it here. We will a little bit as always but um, again we'll kind of come back to that in an episode or two. Okay so let's go ahead and remind ourselves back in the... Well, I need to open up the code I guess. So let's open up our editor and uh, let's check out what we've got for the other elements and so on. So we have this image elements controller, we have a paragraphs controller, these things look pretty similar. So I might do a refactoring where I combine all of these uh, different types of elements, but since I've already started this way where I have different actual models in place, I guess I'll just leave it that way. Um, so we need a controller. I don't believe we need any views for these things. Let's just check really fast. So if we look here, so we just have some JBuilder stuff actually. I'm probably going to end up just seeing the same thing for the, what is that? I guess there are no views at all for image elements, which makes sense. I don't know why these paragraphs are here. Um, maybe that was just some leftover stuff. Let's check our gem file really quick. Um, I want to go ahead and just comment out JBuilder because um, I'm not going to use any sort of API stuff and when we generate scaffolds and whatnot it'll automatically uh, skip all the sort of response types um, so we can comment that out. Um, <clears throat> let's see so let's go ahead and let's look one more thing let's look at the model and just check what's in there so just belongs to page okay so let's go ahead and create a quick scaffold for uh, let's call it um, checklist. So we'll say Rails G scaffold uh, checklist. And I'm going to keep that as just like one word like that. And then let's give it a, so it references a page. And let's just give it a title. And um, I guess we won't really add anything else. Um, one thing I want to do is skip template engine because we don't want any views for this. Okay, so that should generate a few things for us here and we can go ahead and run our migrations. Uh, Rails DB migrate. And let's go check out in our code. I think we need to probably delete some yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of these scaffolds. There's probably a way to skip that also, and I just haven't looked. 
um, but we don't want that scaffold styling that'll mess up our other styling. All right, so let's go ahead and start our server. And let's see about how we can get this to work. Um, so what I want to do, let's first of all open up our, what is it, uh, pages show. And up here where we have this form with, what we're going to do is copy one and we're just going to say, um, let's say add checklist. And for each of these, I think what I want to do is say um, HTML, um, let's say class float left. Let's try this. Um, again, this is temporary. I just This is going to get really crowded if I don't manage to get these buttons to all appear on one line. Um, so let's go refresh our page and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of a gap between them, but that at least gives us a little more room. So on each of these, I'm just going to say M, R, 1. Really just the first two. I don't need it on the last one. Yeah, so now that's kind of spaced out a little bit better. Okay, so what I want to do is say um, at checklist here. Now, if I do that, that's going to throw an error and say I don't have an instance variable checklist. So let's go to the pages controller. And let's say, oops, let's copy that and say at checklist equals at page.checklist. Checklist, it's hard to say, plural for me. Uh, dot build and then what we need to do is make sure that our page actually has many checklists has many check lists okay so now that should actually build that object and so on and so forth but it's gonna throw an error because it's gonna tell us that we have a route that's missing or something um, undefined method so on and so forth so Let's go check our routes again. And if you look, what it did is it put the resources checklist just at the top, and we need to actually put it down inside of the, uh, nested down inside of the pages. So we'll just put that down at the bottom. And now if we refresh, we should be fine. If we click it, it won't do anything. Okay, so what we want is to take a look at our checklist controller. Well, actually, that should have hit this create action. So let's go take a look at our terminal and see what happened here. So we have started post, so on and so forth, and it's telling us we have params missing for checklist. So let's go back and let's just edit our controller a bit. So we're not giving it a title or anything here. Um, we're just essentially um, well, what we're going to do is create an empty checklist with no title or anything like that and just put a form on the page that we're on so that you can add a title and then edit the title and then all that all that kind of stuff. So um, what we want to do is say, uh, well, first first of all, there's, there's kind of a lot of stuff we have to do in here. So the first thing we need to do is uh, set a page and then we want to scope everything to that page. So we'll say set page um, and let's check how we've already done this sort of repeatedly on some other stuff right so we're getting the notebook so let's copy these top two things here and I'm gonna kind of keep what we had going on over there for now so let's just kind of just focus on one action at a time um, we don't need this to be an instance variable we're gonna say um, this is page dot checklist checklist dot uh, create, and then I just want to redirect to the page, redirect to page, and actually that's probably let's check our uh, note. So it needs to be notebook page path, right? So it's kind of why I'm thinking about. Um, changing this up so that we have just one sort of element concept with different element types as opposed to all these different like checklists and paragraphs and image and whatever but 
I, I did that in another series, which I felt was a little bit cleaner, but I don't know. We might stick with it just for the sort of um, having something different. But anyway, um, okay, so let's see what this does. So this should create a checklist. We won't see it. Um, so what we want to do, so right now we're iterating through the paragraphs, then we're iterating through the images, and then we want to iterate through the checklist. In the near future, we're going to blend all of these things and then iterate through them all at once so that you can actually sort them. Um, but we won't worry with that yet. Uh, so at page.checklist.each do checklist. And what I want to do is go ahead and render a form here. So I'm going to copy this form which should be fairly similar. Um, go ahead and fix all my indentation and everything. Um, so what this needs to be is a text field for title. This needs to be checklist. Um, and that's about it. So let's refresh and see what this does now. So while well, we managed to create one somehow so that's interesting oh you know what that is I need to check if it's persisted I keep running into this issue because the way that we're doing this we're actually adding this empty checklist to the uh, list of checklists for this page and so then when we iterate through them it doesn't check whether or not they've actually been saved to the database so I only want to show something here if it's already been saved so we'll say if checklist dot persisted like that, and then we will render the form if that's the case. So let's check that out. So now there's nothing here. So if I click add checklist and I scroll down, now we've got ourselves a checklist. So let's go take a look at actually um, fixing that update. So if we look at our checklist controller. What I'm essentially going to do is just copy all of this, um, come down here and pop it in the bottom, and then I'm going to update with the checklist params instead of, um, let's see, so checklist equals find params ID, so we need to change that, and we'll say checklist dot update checklist params, and then redirect. So then we don't need any of that. Okay, so if you just follow through, reading through this, this should make sense. We're looking up the checklist based on the page and the page based on the notebook. Then we update and redirect. So let's check our checklist params really quick. So we don't want to allow the page ID. We just want to allow the title. So now we should actually be able to update. So let's say... Um, testing this out. Let's save. If we go down here, so it's it's refreshed and we have our title saving. So now that form actually works. So what I want to do real quick is make this so that it displays a kind of a title right here. And if I click on it, it renders a form similar to this. And uh, to do that, let's go back and let's kind of copy the same idea that we did above. So we basically have this um, text content, so on and so forth. Um, and what we're doing is we're putting a form content area here and we're saying D none. Um, and I'm going to do the same kind of deal. So I'm going to say above the form, I'm going to add a div form content. And we'll go ahead and copy all of this and put that in there. And I'm going to give it a class of d-none. And then above it, I'm just going to say div class equals text content. And we'll give this an h4 maybe. And we'll just print out the checklist.title. So let's go refresh and make sure that looks as we would think. So yeah, so now it says testing this out. Um, if I hover, it gets the same kind of styles as some of these other areas. So 
I actually need to go ahead and give that the same kind of padding that I, I did everything else. So I'm going to do that up here. Uh, where was that? Maybe like text content, P4, MB2. And then we'll add that. We'll actually add that to both the text content and the form content classes. Okay, so let's just refresh real quick. So now that looks kind of like the other sections up here. Okay, so now let's make this so if you click it, it renders the form. Well, actually, you know, since we use the same structure, it may just already work, and it does. So let's try that. So testing this out again. So yeah, so it already works, which is great. So we just use the same HTML structure that we'd already hooked up up here, and it worked. So let's go ahead and add a cancel button back. And all we have to do is uncomment that from earlier. Let's give that a shot and see how that looks. So if we refresh, testing this out again, cancel. So one thing I'm noticing here is that we need to actually prevent default on cancel. Also, I'm going to go ahead and add this here, um, class form control. And I'm going to add a label. And I'm just going to say um, checklist title. And let's see what that looks like. Checklist title. OK, cool. So that looks better. Um, let's go over, investigate that um, cancel button. So um, add event listener cancel. What I want to do is say um, event.prevent default right here. And now let's try that again. So essentially what I don't want to happen is it to um, refresh the page and go to this. Because right now it's, it's, an, it's an anchor element. So essentially when you click it, its default behavior is to go to another page or to you know navigate. So if we click cancel now, it doesn't actually go anywhere. It's just like... Uh, does the action that we want. You can see that here, so let me go here without the pound sign. So before, when we clicked cancel, it was taking us to a, like a page with a pound sign at the end, and now it's not. It's just kind of changing the specific element the way that we want. So that's good. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add a button over here that we can click that adds checklist items below. And then each one of those items will have a status, which we can change. And that will essentially be the core functionality of the checklist. As you change the status, what I'm going to do is add a progress bar somewhere, which like has a green, maybe a blue section, and then a gray section for the different statuses. And so as you change things, we'll use stimulus reflex to dynamically just update the stuff on the page automatically. So that'll be pretty slick, but I think I'm going to kick that into the next episode because this one's already almost 20 minutes, I think. So if you made it this far with me, thank you for sticking with me and watching this. And um, again, we'll have a couple more episodes on the back of this one um, that we will finish out this feature and then style up the app and make it look a little more professional. So um, again, thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next episode.